Hi, my name is Dr. Robin Abramzig, and I'm a holistic dentist in Heath, Texas. The name of my practice is Smile Ranch Dentistry, and I am here with a couple of my friends, Ms. Monica James and Julie Clowers. They're both nurse practitioners and board certified naturopaths, and I would like for them to share with you today about mammograms and what are the risks of mammograms. Thank you. Um, we here at Natural Spring, Living Springs Natural Health, we uh, focus on thermography. Uh, thermography can actually pick up um, thermal images that are different, uh, difference in thermal uh, heat on either side of the breast. So we're looking at thermal asymmetry as a risk factor. Um, when abnormal cells start dividing, they need blood supply. They need nourishment from the blood. With blood, because it's warm, we are able to see it a lot earlier on a thermogram than a tumor that's been formed for years on a, on a mammogram. Mm -hmm. So thermography is a little more reliable than mammography mm -hmm. in that it can detect abnormally growing cells up to four years earlier than a mammogram can. That's very interesting. Mm -hmm. So a lot of my patients are concerned actually about the risks associated with mammograms. Can you talk a little bit about the risks that patients are exposed to when they're having a mammogram? I can. Uh, mammograms actually utilize radiation. So we all know radiation is very harmful to our bodies. It actually increases our cancer risk. Mm -hmm. Every time a woman gets a mammogram, she increases her cancer risk by 2%. So if you're looking at mammograms over 10 years, every year for 10 years, you've increased your risk by 20%. The other risk factor with mammograms is compression. So when you get a mammogram, your tissue is actually compressed right. and then the radiation is directly sent through that tissue. With our thermography machine, it is just an infrared camera, thermal camera. We don't have any compression. There is no risk associated with it. We have set up a private facility so that you are behind a curtain and we are able to do the thermogram and you are, remain private. That's wonderful. How long does the procedure take? It takes roughly between 30 minutes to an hour. And the results are immediate? We can see the thermographic differences immediately and we can see the areas that are concerning. What we also have is we have a contract with a physician group that is uh, experienced in reading thermograms, so you will get an official report. Mm -hmm. And then we advise uh, clients on things that they can do in the meantime to help clear up areas that have you know, lymphatic stasis or anything like that that we see. Interesting. So mm -hmm. traditionally, I know most physicians recommend starting mammograms at the age of 40 if, if a patient right. is at higher risk, such as they have a familial predisposition to breast cancer, that they would start those at 35. What about with, uh, with uh, thermograms? Is that the same? It can be, but it can also be even earlier because there's mm -hmm. no risk associated with it. If you do have a family history, you can come in as early as your early 20s. Interesting. Um, but we do recommend every year. Um, and then, of course, if there's a questionable area, um, then we may have you come back, do some interventions like dry brushing and spirulina cream, mm -hmm. and have you come back in three months, and we just take a one, one shot picture of that area. Okay. Um, and then sometimes if there's a higher uh, concern, level of concern, we'll have you come back every six months. So dry brushing. Talk yes. about that. Mm -hmm. So one of the big risk factors for um, breast health and cancer is uh, lymph stasis. So we've got lots of lymph nodes underneath our armpits and um, if you use aluminum deodorant or anything like that it can actually inhibit your body from getting rid of the toxins. So your lymph is kind of like your trash can of your body. It filters out all the toxins and it's got to be sweated out through your pores and your armpits are the primary place That's right. that it is uh, rid of the toxins. So we really talk a lot about dry brushing. That's dry brushing with um, just a regular brush you can get a boar's head or a boar's bristle brush mm -hmm. and we start under the armpit and work our way over the breast. That helps stimulate all those lymphatic ducts Wonderful. to open up. What about as far as breast health, what about bras and bra wearing and the type of bras? You really want something that's non-constrictive, preferably a non-underwire. Absolutely. So the wire actually, your breasts are really lymphatic. They've got a lot of lymph movement in them, a lot of lymph drainage in them. So if you wear underwires, that tends to block the lymph from draining. So we really recommend non-compression bras and preferably no wires if possible. And also when you get home, take your bra off. Yes. Put it back on when you leave your house. Absolutely. But wear it, please. <laughs> yes, absolutely. <laughs> Thank you so much for joining us today. Thank, Thank you. you.